Now the crisis in Belarus shows no sign of letting up as neither protesters nor authorities show any sign of backing down as our international correspondent Annalise Borges reports. Belarusians have been trying to have a say in what country they want for the future. We are defending our freedom of speech, our freedom of choice, our freedom of gathering. On Thursday, striking miners gathered to talk about the future of a movement that is under unprecedented pressure from authorities. Today a person went missing. He hasn't answered our calls for hours. The local district department of internal affairs has given us information that he is not there. The pressure has started. People are starting to disappear again. Traditionally part of the electorate of the country's president, state factory workers have turned against Alexander Lukashenko and reject election results that crowned him the victor of a sixth term in office. The contested vote plunged Belarus into one of the most serious crises in a generation. But not everybody wants something to do with it. I know nothing. I'm not even interested. Do you understand? I don't need this. The city of Soligorsk is located some 100 kilometers south of the capital, Minsk, and paints a more complex picture about what's happening in the country. After 26 years of a leader with self-described authoritarian tendencies, an apparent apathy reigns among some voters, a mixture of resignation and intrinsic fear. Some people have to buy these signs for institutions. Some people do it as a joke. They say when they hang them in their offices, people behave. The crisis in Belarus may well last months or even years, since after decades of having their voices silenced, many here may be unable to speak out. Annelise Borges is in Soligorsk, Euronews. Lots more to come on Good Morning Europe. Stay with us.